Our next caller is Chase from Tennessee. Hey, what's up, Chase? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks uh, for having me. Thanks for all you do. Hey, I um, just started MAPS Anabolic, uh, well, three weeks ago. So I am about to transition from the pre-phase to phase one. Um, I want to get, you know, the highest quality workout I can from, well, each workout, but especially each phase from the beginning. So I'm wondering if there's a way to avoid sort of trial and erroring my way through um, how to calculate what, how much to uh, increase my intensity. So for instance, if I'm squatting 165 for 12 reps in the pre-phase, but I'm aiming for six, uh, four to six reps of a squat in phase one, what's a good way to determine how much weight to try to go for? If I can, if I've got, you know, two to three reps left in the tank at 165 at 12 reps, uh, how do I calculate to go for four to six? No, that's a, that's a really, really good question. So Chase, are you an engineer? What do you do for work? I am a professor very far away from anything like engineering. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. All right. So here's what you do. You take pi and you take, you multiply it by the <laughs> square root. Sure. Square root. Yeah. Yeah. I there's work actually, with that all the time. Yeah. There's that. Okay. Solve so for X. Yeah. No, all, all joking aside, there's a lot of formulas that you could be. And here's the problem. None of them are super accurate per person. Unfortunately, it is going to be kind of trying it out, but here's what I want to, here's how I want to help you out. The feeling out process is not a waste. In fact, that that's actually a good part of entering into phase one. One of the reasons why phase one, two, and three are about three weeks is it honestly takes about a week to get into the state of mind, get into the feel of heavy lifting, find the weights. That first week, by the way, still builds muscle and builds strength. By, by the second week, you're much more fine-tuned. By the third week, you're, the intensity is much higher, and then you move into a new phase. So what I want you to do you said 165 for 12. Uh, I would do the first set with 185, see how that feels, and then go from there uh, within that first week. And it's not a, it's not a waste. You're not taking – in. Uh, the more you do this, the easier it will be for you to predict the weight that you can use. But the formulas, in my experience, more often than not, just put people in the wrong direction because they're just – not super accurate on an individual basis. Not to mention that, I mean, you also are doing two in the tank. So that's the beauty of that is, you know, if you go, oh man, I just, I just did that set and I easily could have done four more reps. Cool. Slap some more weight on there. And then you slap more weight on, then you go, oh, wow. I only had like one in the tank. Okay. Back off a little bit. I mean, that's, what's nice about giving yourself a cushion is like, it's yeah. not going to hurt you. It's if, and flow. Yeah. Some sets you go over a little bit like that, but what you're going to find and what's wrong with the formulas is that that could change uh, by how you woke up that morning or how you slept, where your calorie intake is for that day. If you um, had a fight with your significant other, yeah. like all kinds of factors play into you may that. Yeah. You know, may notice the difference in throughout the workout, maybe the beginning of the workout, you tend to have way more energy versus the end of the workout or vice versa. I mean, there's so many other variables. And part of, I think, getting good at all this is actually just practicing all that and learning to, to feel it out. And the difference of you, I'll just tell you right now, the difference of you giving a set 20% or 30% more effort is is uh not going to make the difference. It's you it's nothing you're it's splitting hairs. I was I was teasing you about asking if you're an engineer cuz it's like this is totally like one of my engineer clients would ask me like they want to mm -hmm. know, "Adam, we're going to do this. I want every ounce of effort I can get out of each set. I, I want to maximize it. So how do we mathematically break that down and figure it out?" And I totally respect that and get that, but it's it's actually not that's not as big of a deal as you think it is. You maintaining your caloric intake where it should be, you being consistent, you sticking to the program, like that stuff is going to matter so much more than how much, you know, north of 10 or 15 pounds of where you could have went on the bar is going to make a difference. Yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, beforehand, uh, I was guilty of like really trying to make sure like that first set was really intensive and I was making sure that I was my weight matched exactly like, you know, what I was capable of. And then you mature because of experience and lots of practice at this and realize less is always, you know, better, a better approach to get through. And, and you have to really account for those other sets that are going to precede that. And then getting closer to that just takes time and practice and, and uh, being familiar with what's in front of you. You just reminded me, Justin, of actually a, a tip I used to give clients around this too. There's nothing, Chase, that that says that you can't slow the tempo down when you get down to the last four or five. So let's mm -hmm. say 
you underestimated the weight and you're like, oh shit, I could have easily done 225 and I only put 185 on the bar. And you can tell by the way it's moving, you're on you're on rep six and you're about, and you know you're heading to 10. You're like, 10 is going to be easy. Okay. Well, those last four, I mean, make your negative two to three seconds longer or pause at the bottom for a second and start. So start to use, use other tools that you have. Great, it, great tip. Yeah. Just slow down the tempo on that. Um, and, and not, don't worry so much about the weight. you'll know as you're going through the, the set, if it was too light of weight you put on there and then, Hey, here's a great time to slow down tempo. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, man. And you already have access to maps anabolic, right? Yeah, I was. Uh, I think you you guys recommend going performance after that, or yeah, maps performance is a good follow. I forget what you. We... So here's the deal. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll send yeah, you sure. maps. I'm gonna send you maps performance just so you have something to go straight into. It sounds like this is kind of a new thing for you since you're in pre phase. So I'm I'm excited to hear about your your progress throughout this whole process. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that so much. And yeah, I've uh, the the closest I got to athletics growing up was. Um, well, it wasn't chess club, but it wasn't much better either. So <laughs> no, this has been, um, it's new to me, but, but it's, it's going great so far. So thanks. Awesome. awesome. No problem. Jason. Thanks, Chase. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's, here's the, there's, there's two sides of metrics that you see. There's a, there's great benefits to it because it can start you off on the right path. It's a little bit of a roadmap. You know, if you have, if you know nothing at all, it'll, point in the right direction. But here's the bad side of it is that it can also take you out of your body when you start to obsess mm -hmm. over metrics. And I've seen it so many times where someone's like, but I'm supposed to be at 60% of my one rep max. And I'm, you know, your form right. is bad. You're not lifting it properly. It's obviously wrong, but they stick too much to it. Or I'm supposed to eat these foods. So I'm going to stick to this, but yeah, what, but you're constipated, you're bloated, you don't feel good. So you know, metrics are good, but don't let them take you outside of your body because then they become bad. It's just the framework. Yeah. You really have to pay attention to what your body's signaling and what it's like, uh, you know, providing you along that process. But yeah, that happens all the time. I get clients that are just completely fixated on the number of reps, the number of sets, like being able to really match it like specifically. And it takes them away from then, well, how did it feel and how are you feel now that you've completed it? It's just, you know, they just get outside their body. I mean, we, we all still fucked us up. How many times? Did you put a weight on the oh, bar yeah. just in the last month <laughs> and you either underestimated or overestimated? That's just part. But this is also where uh, this is how I like to. I mean, everybody wants to program everything and debate over which way is better or how to phase in and out. But this is where I like to play with things like tempo and also uh, isolation exercises or excuse me, uh, isometric stuff. Yeah, those are the variables it's, to consider. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, wow. I, I totally put not enough weight on this bar. Okay, cool. I'm gonna, I can make it heavier really easy. Right, yeah. Said. I'm going to pause at the bottom for three or seconds. squeeze the shit out of my oh, quads yeah. at the top. Bodybuilders are great at making like lightweight really hard. Yeah. So, I mean, that that what a great opportunity to to use those tools that most people don't manipulate in the first place. Uh, and instead of, you know, spending an extra 10 minutes getting on your phone with the calculator and putting in some, you know, crazy formula that is like me is totally moot because tomorrow when you don't get great sleep, it's going to, you're going to be off by 20%. hundred percent. Like, stupid. Absolutely.